Investing is 90% psychological and how well you can control your emotions during good times and more importantly, during volatile times. Within the psychology of investing, there's this concept called FOMO, the fear of missing out. FOMO is the feeling that you get when you're really anxious and you're really panicking about missing out on something and the implications of doing so. FOMO is present all of the time, but I would say it's probably at an all time high right now with the likes of social media and how people are able to curate and display their lives in a particular way. It's easy to see other people's investments, again, via social media, and to start getting a little bit anxious because maybe your investments aren't doing as well as other people's, or perhaps you just have completely different holdings in your investment portfolio. By all means, I think we should learn from others. And I think it's a positive thing to be able to see how other people are investing via social media. But can you imagine what your 10 year return would look like if you decided to alter your own investment portfolio every single time you saw someone with different holdings to you. You would probably end up with not much return as you would get no compound growth. I think the point here is that if you're unable to deal with FOMO, then this could lead you to constantly worrying about your own investment choices. And the fear of missing out may alter your decision making abilities. And it could even cause you to completely change your investment plan and your investment strategy that you've probably gone to the effort to tailor for you and your situation. FOMO itself is not really a behavior bias, but actually a collection of different behavior biases that come together. And two that I want to mention in this video are loss aversion and herd behavior. In psychology, FOMO can be partially explained by this concept of loss aversion. And loss aversion is a behavior bias. Loss aversion is the preference that people tend to have to avoid potential losses rather than to acquire potential gains. It suggests that losses are twice as difficult to deal with emotionally and people just hate to lose out. And not wanting to lose out can of course cause people to invest in everything in order to avoid losing out on anything at all. And this of course then puts you at risk in investing in a load of rubbish, things that are really hyped up and just aren't gonna go anywhere. I've been there and I'll be the first to admit that. There's been times when I've had FOMO, I've invested and it's turned out to be a really poor decision. I've actually come to think that experiencing this and getting burnt by this early on in your investment journey can actually be a really positive thing because it teaches you lots. It teaches you not just to follow the crowd, not to follow where the hype is and instead do your own research and figure out what works for you, your situation and your risk tolerance. The other behavior bias that can really affect FOMO and your investment strategy is herd behavior. When we see everyone else talking about how a particular stock or a particular cryptocurrency is gonna do really well, we get FOMO, it's hard not to. We don't want to miss out on those potential gains as I spoke about with loss aversion. But also we want to feel validated, we want to feel safe and we want to feel like we are also doing what the majority of other people are doing. And that's herd behavior. And there's this term in investing called herding. And it's this idea where investors follow the crowd and do what the majority of other investors seem to be doing, even without doing their own research. I just wanted to point out here that, you know, we're humans, we're gonna get emotions, but sometimes emotions can negatively impact our investing and they can actually unleash different behavior biases, which can then in turn alter our investment strategy and investment decision-making. FOMO is really difficult to avoid and it's especially difficult to avoid when it comes to anything money related. Money is a really sensitive topic and no one wants to miss out on the chance to gain lots and lots of money and improve their life, especially if they're not in a great financial position to begin with. The problem with succumbing to FOMO is that it can drag investors into the market at the wrong time. Not always, but quite often. This is because if you're hearing that you need to invest in X, Y, and Z in order to 100 times your money, then chances are that there's already a bubble there and it's too late. Giving in to FOMO could cause you to put your money into a stock that's already had its rally. It's gone up in price, you invest here instead of here, and you end up just losing money as the value returns to a, a sensible level. You know, it's become overvalued because of FOMO, it's gone up and up and up, you invest at the top, and then it has to come down because it's gonna go to a normal valuation. And that's not always a good thing. Or of course, you could end up getting FOMO and invest in 
just a load of rubbish and lose money that way. You could also decide to put money into a stock that has already done well. So maybe your neighbor has told you how much money they've earned on a particular company that they invested in two months ago and you put money into that company because you don't want to miss out if it does it again. But like we always say, past performance does not indicate future performance. And if you haven't done your own research and, is, and you're only basing this investment on FOMO and the potential gains rather than the potential losses and you know, evaluating everything together, you're probably just gonna end up losing money. Now we've spoken about the prevalence of investing FOMO and how it can really negatively impact your investment journey. Let's speak about some ways that you can deal with it. I think the first thing is to realize that capitalizing on every single investment opportunity is near on impossible. And if we did invest into everything that we had even a slight FOMO about, we'd lose a lot of money. I think the next thing is to have a really high level of cautiousness. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. If everyone's telling you that you can easily get rich quick and make loads of money overnight doing this or that, you probably can't, otherwise everyone would be a millionaire. And like I said earlier, if you get in FOMO about how someone has already earned money with a particular stock or a particular investment, the time has probably already been and gone. Spend your time looking for the next investment or looking at how you can get reliable returns on particular ETFs or index funds rather than putting your money into something that it's just not going anywhere anymore. A really important way to deal with FOMO in investing is to actually have a strategy in place. Having a strategy in place is a great way to have a systematic approach to investing and it will help dampen any fear and regret. This is a really good way to reduce your chances of actually experiencing FOMO because you will know what you're investing in ahead of time. And you may find it easier to ignore any temptation if you know it doesn't actually align and fit in with your own plan and investment strategy. The last one and the big one for me is to avoid feeling time pressured. When it comes to experiencing FOMO in investing, it's really easy to get this time pressure feeling where you feel like you need to invest right now right this second, otherwise you are not going to experience those massive returns that everyone's talking about. It feels very, very time sensitive, but actually the likelihood is, is that if you wait a couple of days, a couple of weeks, even a couple of months, it won't make much difference at all. And this will just allow you some time to do your own research and, you know, try and set your emotions back and think about whether this is actually right for you. Whenever I experience FOMO in my own investing, I always try to remind myself that I'm a long-term investor. I'm not a day trader. I don't need to feel pressured today to buy something within 30 seconds, otherwise I miss out on all of its potential gains. It's not like that. And in 50 years time, it doesn't, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna realize that if I bought Tesla today or tomorrow, it probably isn't really gonna make much difference anyway. So I might as well spend that time doing research and making sure that whatever I'm investing in is aligning nicely with my goals and my own risk tolerance. If you invest using Vanguard and you want to see what recent changes they've made to their website, then watch this video right here.